why can't we talk without fighting? Part two, welcome back. <laughs> And just to say, we got into one right before we started fil right before we started taking the steak. So we had to work it out. So we're better now. Are we better now? Don't try to be a mind reader. This is a classic one for me. Avoid it. Yes, because I have I have put this on my husband for many years. I will continue to put this on my husband because it is just something that I, it was ingrained in me as I was growing up, reading romance novels, watching TV, seeing the commercials on the TV. Just influenced. It's, yes, the influence socially in, in my community taught me that my husband should know what I want. Right. He should be able to read my mind right. and give me exactly right. what it is I need. I should bring flowers mean. every time. <laughs> I should, I should uh, get a, ride my horse in. I should just know when her when she when she's overwhelmed and create bubble baths for her. I I should just know all that stuff. So I even before I came into her life, mm -hmm. the even to her I became in her life because before me there was no other man, of course. But <laughs> even before I became in her life, I was already behind the eight ball because her expectation of what a man should do or what a person should do relationship wise was to to know by osmosis. Let me talk to the guys just for a minute. A lot of times we have these conversations in our head that we don't let our partner know about it. And so we have these whole conversations and then we only tell like the quarter end of it and we expect them to know what's going on. Where Lisa mentioned earlier that uh, she can't mind read, like, like I'm not a mind reader. I also can't, take a stand and assume she knows from past things what I expected. And if you have a problem and you're unable to resolve that with your spouse on your own, it's okay for you to go and get help from an outside source. If you need to see a counselor yeah. or your pastor, it's okay for you to go and seek help. It's better that you work on it with the third party than you not work on it at all. Getting help. Specifically, I'll address this to the guys. It's tough, right? Because most guys don't want to ask for help. We'll ask for help to build things, work things out. Some guys don't ask for help at all, right? And the idea is if you see that there is challenges that are going on in your life with your spouse, it's okay to ask for help. Long before I became a psychotherapist, a therapist, Lisa and I would go and, and seek help and I, I just didn't want to do it. I'm like, why can't we just talk it out, work it out among ourselves? But we were trying to fix our communication issues with the current pattern of communication. It was just going around in a big circle, never landing. So we had to, we had to go look for other resources, learn outside of ourselves. I had to make it okay with me. I'm thinking, oh, how about we just, in my mind, it's a coach. It's a coach, it's a referee, right? So when we get into it, if we're inside the office getting into it, hopefully there's a good match that that referee, if it's on my side, would throw a penalty flag and say 10 yards, you know, illegal use of the, the mouth, value, the, mouth <laughs> the volume of your voice, right? Or 10 yards on Lisa, illegal use of attitude, right? <laughs> Or, or 10 yards, interference, they cut somebody off, just like that. We do that. See, she got that flag because she just cut me off. <laughs> so again, getting help, it's okay. If you want to make something work, if you want to make your relationship work, you always have to come back to the negotiating table. People say, well, relationship's not negotiation. It is all the time. 
I mean, we found out that over the years, as we change, we change. We have to continue to come back and see what it would take for us to continue our relationship moving forward and not only just staying together, but working how to get better. Watch videos together, um, go to counseling together, go to retreats together. It's really good. Uh, guys, go to uh, hang out with other guys who are learning to be better men in the relationship those things people don't normally do. It's exceptional people, people who wanted to, who would want to evolve and grow and want the best in their life and end the relationship that people that do that. And as long as you both are willing to commit to working on your relationship, that's the key step. You both need to be willing to try and continue to move forward. Yeah, if we shot videos back in the 90s, <laughs> this will be completely different than it is right now. <laughs> Seek help. Don't wait until it's a crisis. At that point, you know, if you if if there's 100% in a relationship and I'm 100% in and Lisa's 100% in, we have we're good. Right? But if Lisa is 40% in the relationship, 60% out the door, I'm thinking 80% in, 20% out, that's a big chasm we gotta work with. So don't wait until it gets there. End on a positive note. Look, arguments are gonna happen. You're gonna overstep your boundaries sometime. Sometimes you're not gonna say the right thing in the moment. You might not do the right thing in the moment. But here's the point. When you have something come up in, in your relationship mm -hmm. and you need to talk about it, yep. make sure that you resolve that issue before you move on. Come to some kind of resolution. Resolve meaning this. I'm unhappy with you. I'm unhappy with you. I'm unhappy with you too. I'm unhappy with you. And then we talk it out. And then we go, you know, can we hug it out? And Lisa usually says, I'm not ready to hug it out. Because where guys can really like, Oh, I'm good. We solved it and move on. Generally, women are like, I'm not ready yet. I might need another 36 days. No, <laughs> we hang I'm... on to the emotion <laughs> behind it. We're feeling <laughs> things still. <laughs> I'm kidding about 36 days. But again, so we have to be patient and wait for them to come back, but always insist either a hug, we're good look them in the eye because you want to leave it connected because what what fighting does it disconnects right it's it's emotional it disconnects you always want to come back and connect with your partner if that person's important to you and if they and if they believe that relationship's important they will always come back just give them a little time to do that and on a positive note you know compliment them oh you look so tired today from crying all night long no don't do that <laughs> That's that. That's that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Or I didn't. You know, Lisa would come up to me and she goes, "Wow, stayed up all night worrying about it. Those bags are doing really good for you." <laughs> that's no. That, that doesn't work like that. But what we say is compliment, right? Have rules in your relationship. You know, when you when you end on a positive note, meaning don't call each other personal names. Don't make it personal. Don't be, don't try work, not to say insensitive things. Keep the topic to the topic, right? And then a rule at the end is we have to hug it out. Lisa and I, you know, we used to, when you honestly looked at it, we used to think that, you know, we're against each other, but we're not. We're not adversary, we're on the same team. It is important to show affection when you're done. Even if it's difficult, give your partner a hug. You know, your heart might not be in it in the moment, but show some kind of affection towards one another. Use compliments. Mm -hmm. You know, honey, I know that we're having a difficult time right now, but I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me about this because it's important mm -hmm. to me. I'm hearing you. I'm gonna take the time to think about what it is you're saying. I respect the fact that you're here with me and we're going through it. <laughs> and you're a great father. In an ideal scenario, it should work exactly like that. But there's no perfection, right? So you, you do your best, right? But you always come back. That's the thing is you always come back and connect. Men need respect. Women need love. love. And we learned that by 
watching a DVD on relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thought. Sorry. A little squirrel. One thought. Even when you have a rule, this is one of our rules when we got new furniture, no dogs on the couch. <laughs> Listen to this. No dogs. It was a rule. But every now and then we'll sit on the couch and our dogs will look at us and guess who looks at me and goes, and she talks and she talks to the dog like this. I would really love to have you up, but daddy says no, so you can't come on the couch. And I just look at her like, how is that even right? But that's a rule and we stick by it. So some things are never resolved. <laughs> Remember, like and subscribe. So until next time, we'll see you later. Well, we'll see you later.